Welcome back to Cryostasis. Let's continue and freeze our asses off. Oh, oh god, I am... What the fuck? Oh, oh, oh shit. <laughs> I just realized, like, three seconds before I died, how fast my health was going down. Well, that, um... That's not a good start. Okay, let's make it faster this time. Go, 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 go! Oh. Thank God for this red stuff. Because if it wasn't for this, I would be so dead. Alright, where am I going? I think over here? Oh, shit. Uh... Well, I'm not dying anymore. Where am I going? Up there? I guess so. Oh, there's another shot off door. What's going on? Are the repairs done? The captain might destroy the Do ship. Do not forget my cargo. Captain, open the door. Captain, sir, open the door. What's wrong with you? Ahead, Frank. Where's the radio message? Did you give that message to him? The, uh... I forgot the name of it. The place where you pilot the ship. You know, the front main captain's place. What the fuck is it called? Captain... Uh, I don't remember. Whatever, it's this place. It always creeps me out when doors close behind me. Even though every single door in the entire game has done that, it still creeps me out. What? Captain, sir, open the door. What's wrong with you? Ahead, flank. Where's the radio message? Did you give that message to him? What's the matter? Isn't this what you wanted? Grab the wheel. The ship is yours. It's not turning. The control lever is stuck. I can't move it. Help me. The telegraph is stuck. Engine room full astern. We're going to end the knots. It's not safe. Come on. Back. Emergency or I'll have you court-martialed. Full astern. Stop it! Do something! Calm down! There's no need to rush anymore. It'll start soon. How much longer? Don't know. This is an automated process. We need to get out of here. And go where? What about the crew? The crew will manage. Get the helicopter ready! Without the captain's permission, I can't do that, sir. I'll help you. We'll all do it together. I'll meet you up top in ten minutes. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Wait, he's saying something. <clears throat> no, I can't hear anything.
and the flames of a great yearning to save them and lead them out onto an easy path leaped up in his heart, and these mighty flames were reflected in his eyes. And seeing this, the people thought he was enraged. They thought that was why his eyes flashed so. And they instantly grew wary, like wolves, expecting him to throw himself against them. And they drew closer about him that they might seize him and kill him. He saw what they were thinking, but the flames in his heart only flared up higher, for their thoughts added the sorrow to the flames of his yearning. I'm still attempting to try to understand the story. Sort of, but... Uh, I don't know. It's not fitting in. I just... It doesn't make any sense. It's probably not worth trying to understand. But I, I can't help but try to understand it at least a little bit. Remember also thy creator in the days of thy youth, before the evil days come, and the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Two, before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened, and the clouds return after the rain. I'm pretty sure this is the end battle arena thing. If my memory serves me, this is where the game gets even crazier. From extremely crazy to off its fucking rocker. I hope I'm remembering right. Because I love crazy games. But let's see if what I think is about to happen actually happens. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow down, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those who look out of the windows shall be darkened, and the doors shall be shut in the street when the sound of the grinding is low, and one shall rise to the song of a bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Yea, they shall be afraid of that which is high, and terror shall be in the way. And the almond tree shall blossom, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail. Because man goeth to his everlasting home, and the mourners go about the streets. I have no idea what any of that means. Yep, I'm pretty sure this is it. The silver cord is loosed, or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher is broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, and the dust returneth to the earth as it was, and the spirit returneth unto God who gave it. Let me just make a save here. <laughs> oh. 
Okay. Uh, apparently falling down two feet caused my legs to break. Apparently I have brittle bone syndrome. That's not where I go. Where do I go? I have, like, no sprint. Looking for a pathway... somewhere. Okay, I don't... doesn't really look like a pathway, but somehow I'm here. Am I supposed to be here? supposed to be here. Let me load. What am I doing? There is that red ball. Maybe I go to that? I don't even know what... Oh, that's one of those... What is that? It's one of those things. Hell if I know what it is. Well... Here we go. singing its mournful song and the thunder crashed and the rain poured down what else can i do to save these people cried out Danko above the thunder and suddenly he ripped open his breast and tore out his heart and held it high above his head it shone like the sun even brighter than the sun and the raging forest was subdued and lighted up by this torch, the torch of a great love for the people. And the darkness retreated before it and plunged, quivering, into a yawning bog in the depths of the forest. And in their astonishment, the people were as if turned to stone. The brave Dango cast his eye over the endless steppe cast a joyful eye over this land of freedom and gave a proud laugh and then he fell down and died and his followers were so full of joy and hope that they did not notice he had died and that his brave heart was still flaming beside his dead body but one timid creature noticed it and fearing he knew not what stamped on the flaming heart and it sent up a shower of sparks, and went out. <laughs> okay, that, yeah, that totally makes sense. I understand everything now. Uh, apparently I can take this? Alrighty, here we go. <laughs> yep, this is just what I remember. <laughs> See, if you didn't understand the story before, you do now, right? I mean, this totally makes sense. Right? <laughs> this game is fucking insane. Was that like Kronos, the god of time or something? I don't remember what the hell I'm supposed to do here. I, like, what the fuck is this? Like, okay, now I have superpowers and I've got like finger things and there's like a spinny thing and I'm fighting a god. Okay, sure. And we're in space. 
Oh, I don't know what I just did. I just left clicked. What did that do? What? Huh? Uh. I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, something just happened. I think I failed. I failed something. I don't even know what. Yeah, this game is bonkers. And I love it for that. Okay, so what is this? Okay, I just left clicked. Alright, it exploded the person and then it... I... Okay, they attacked me. And... I've... I still have no idea what I'm doing. Let's go in again. Try number three. Alright, let's do this. That did nothing. Okay, it comes back to me. Right, so it can hit an enemy. Right. Okay. Okay, I just... Whoa. Okay, I hit an enemy, and then it created a red line thing, and the red line thing has a ball, and I caught that ball. Okay. Making progress. So, hit the enemy. And then get here. Hit the next enemy, right? Okay. Where's the next one? Okay. Alright, making pro- Ow! Fuck. I just got smushed by a 2,000 ton hammer thing. Okay, so that is what I'm supposed to do. But on top of doing that, I should also avoid getting smushed. Got it. Another ball. Shit, come on. Boy. I I don't know what happened. It's like a race against who can get the most points or something? I don't know. Like he's smashing them, it's making blue things, and I'm hitting them and it's making red things. Hell if I know. Alright, yeah, so I need to get them first. So yeah, he made a blue line by doing that. Oh my god, Choppy. Oh god, don't smash me. Do not fucking smash me. I think I'm winning. I 
certainly got a lot of balls in the game. I got all... Ooh, I got all my balls in this game. Please don't smash my balls. I feel like I'm winning. something What am I doing? I, I think I need to do something more. I think I've got a lot of a lot of these things going on. Uh, what am I doing? Right, I see a bunch of red things on my fingers and two blue. So All right, there's one blue. Uh, can I do something about that? Uh, I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing here. Okay, there we go. I did something. Hi. What's up? Please don't smash me. Oh, d d do you want to be my friend? Can I get on your thing and ride with you? Can you, do you want to pick me up? You want to take me on a ride? You want to go on a big adventure? Are you going to pick me up? Your hair looks fucking disgusting. Please don't squish me. Your hand looks like it's constructed out of 99% bum maps. Is it okay? It looks kind of painful. You might want some moisturizer for that. Hey, buddy. How you doing? What's up? Oh, you want to pet me? Or squish me? This is actually as far as I remember in the game. I have no idea what the hell happens next. I mean, this is what I rem remember as the ending. This is what sticks out to me the most. I don't remember if anything happens afterwards. Like, is this the end? Or... I mean, it feels like the end. What? I don't remember this at all. God, this game is fucking insane. <laughs> this game is bonkers. This makes no sense at all. It's a disembodied hand that has taken me to... somewhere. I'm in space. No one is going to help you. The whole world is against you. Protect yourself, or they will eat you. Who the hell is this? Is this me? Actually, wait, isn't this that dark hooded figure that I keep seeing walking around? All right, let's see what happens. Along with you. Ahead, flank. Well, still radio message. Did so you now I can actually affect what done? happens. I'm actually here now as a person. I think I'm supposed to change something. Put 
What's the matter? Isn't this what you wanted? Grab the wheel! The ship is yours! Uh, it's not turning! The control lever is stuck! I can't move it! Help me! The telegraph is stuck! Engine room full astern! We're going 20 knots! It's not safe! Come on! Back! Emergency or I'll have you court-martialed! Full astern! Okay, I need to... I need to do something. Whoa. What? There's something invisible there, and it's distorting the light. What the fuck? What is that? Huh. Okay. There's another invisible thing. <laughs> All right, let's do this again. Captain, sir, open Can the I door. keep them out? Ahead, flank. No. Where's the radio message? Did you give that message to him? What if I stand in front of the door? I mean, like, do I need to stop the... Nope. <laughs> do I need to stop the captain from dying? What's the matter? I can't seem to Isn't press anything. Grab the wheel. The ship is yours. What am I doing? It's not turning. The control lever is stuck. I can't move it. I can't seem to help him. Help me! The telegraph is stuck! Engine room full astern! We do it 20 knots! It's not safe! Come on! Back! Emergency or I'll have you court martialed! Full astern! I can't seem to do anything. Fire in the engine room! <laughs> yeah, what am I doing? Can I do anything with you? Oh, maybe I need to do this one first. What's the matter? Isn't this what you wanted? Grab the wheel. The ship is... Uh, it's not turning. The control lever is stuck. I can't move it. Okay, what can I... Help me. The okay, what can I is stuck. do as him? For if one falls, another will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, and hath not another to lift him up. Hold on, Captain. I will beg HQ on my knees for the ship. Just you hang on. We are getting out. Out! Open water. We've made it. We're on the way. Wait, what? That, that's all I needed to do? It's just save the captain? To save the ship? What? Um... I don't like this. I'm back here. Oh, I think I'm the rescue people, right? And this time, well, I can actually rescue them. Well, that's not good. Except, maybe they rescue me? Grab my hand! Grab my hand! Come on! Come on, grab! No! Come on! Uh, 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 
I'm the captain of the North Wind Nuclear Icebreaker. Welcome. You are lucky. The ice is rather thin here. You could have easily gone under. Well, now, no time to lose. Let's head for the ship. We have some rough times ahead. And let us send your wonderful dogs back. Unlike us, they always find their way home. Follow me, cried Danko, and he rushed forward, holding his flaming heart high above his head to light the way. And the people followed him, as if under a spell. And once more the forest began to murmur and wave its treetops in wonder. But its murmur was drowned out by the sound of running feet. The people were running ahead boldly and swiftly, lured on by the wonderful vision of the flaming heart. And even now there were those who perished. But they perished without tears and complaints. And Danko went on ahead of them, his heart flaming brighter and brighter. Okay, and that's the end. Did you understand it? No, me neither. Yeah, I mean, like, what's the message? I helped the captain and that saved us? Is that what happened? Like, what, the, the iceberg saw that I helped the captain and because of that decided to let us go? So what, before I did that, it originally took it? Uh, it originally held on to the ship? Or hit the ship? Because it was angry that the people abandoned its captain and decided to punish every single human being on board? Not just the two that were responsible for not helping the captain? Or like, what? I mean, who the fuck knows? The story makes no sense at all, and why do I have the ability to go back in time, sort of, and change what happened? And why at the beginning of the game did I save myself after I already died? And like, what? And why did I fight a fucking god right at the end of the game? Anyone have any ideas? Because I sure as hell don't know. Yeah. Yeah, this game makes no sense at all. But that's part of the fun of it, because it is a really obscure, buggy, bizarre, and exotic game. And that adds to it. So yeah, at the end of the day, how I see cryostasis is... a... A fascinating mess. It's buggy as hell. The story makes no sense. It's extremely unoptimized. And there's quite a few other little design mistakes. But what I really love about it is just how unique it is. I've never played a game like it before. Um, I like how good the sound effects are. It has an incredible sound design. Um, I like... Uh, the graphics, especially how the graphics um, add to the atmosphere of this cold environment. There really is an extraordinary amount of detail. So it's the way the graphics and the sound combine to create these incredible environments. Um, and the monster design too. The, for the most part, the monsters are really fascinating. Like you have that prisoner monster thing that has a prison inside of its head. And then that bizarre creature with some guns strapped to its uh, strapped to its arms, and its hands bolted to its head with two lights, and it's got like a siren inside of it. It's so weird, but really interesting. So yeah, uh, in terms of the game design, um, I really like how hardcore the action is. The fact that it has no crosshair and it's kind of like a, a desperate, uncomfortable fight. You know, it's never a Twitch shooter. Your guns really feel like they have weight behind them. Um, but I didn't think they went far enough 
with making the fights feel desperate. I think they should have gone lighter on the ammo. Because after a certain point in the game, like, I don't know, maybe halfway through or something, or probably even earlier than that, you basically have as much ammo as you can do anything with ever. And I started not even having to worry about it. Like, I, I basically never used my melee weapons after I got, like, two weapons. You know, I was set for the rest of the game. So, yeah, there's definitely too much ammo. The fighting needs to be more desperate. You know, it's it, it turns a little bit more towards action than it does survival. Which I think is unfortunate, because I think survival fits the mood of the game more than action. Action kind of distracts from the atmosphere. You know, makes you just focus on killing something rather than really getting into the feel of the game. Um, so yeah, the ammo thing. You know, the fights aren't desperate enough because of the ammo. Uh, and also, uh, I think there's just too many monsters. You know, it's just a constant, like, every single room... Like, the, the basic design of the game, as you're going through it, is basically, you go into a room, you flip some switches to turn on the power, some monsters burst out, burst out, you kill them. Or, you go into a room, some monsters burst out, and then you turn on the lights. Next room, you go in the room, you turn on some more power switches, heat yourself up, and then some monsters burst out. You know, that's kind of like the formula for most of the game. So, I wish they changed that up and didn't just have that. You know, less action, more doing other interesting things. Like, there are some flashes of design and horror brilliance in this, I think. Like the one scene in the kitchens, where you're trying to just sneak past those zombie dog things. Like, that's awesome. I love that. That's exactly the sort of thing I like. So, it, it definitely did a lot of things wrong. But... Despite all that, I freaking love this game. And in fact, the, um... I think I've already mentioned it, but the sound effects have... captured my attention so much that I really want to show them off. So I'm definitely going to make a video after this. A special little video just showing off some of the sound effects in this game. Because it's one of the... That's one of the interesting things about... this game... And some others, like, for example, The Experiment, which is another game that I did a playthrough of, which is similar to this in the sense that it's buggy and has a F-ton of issues, but it's also interesting at the same time. What's interesting about these games that are like this is that it's not they're not like most games that get mediocre reviews and, you know, not that many people play them. Like, the vast majority of games that, say, get, like, 5 out of 10 or whatever, you know, generic, kind of mediocre games... Typically, they're just generic, right? They're not interesting. They don't really have anything of interest to offer. They're just like a big bundle of generic cliches, and who cares? You've seen it all before. So no one cares. But the problem is, sometimes you get games that also fall into, you know, similar ratings. They're not all that good, and not that many people play them, but they're not generic, they actually have some elements that are really interesting and other elements that are very bad. You know, like, think of it this way. Super generic game, like, you know, graphics, 5, sound, 5, story, 5, gameplay, 5. You know, everything's, like, level. It's generic, it's boring. But a game like this, you know, graphics, like, 8, you know, environmental, I don't know, the, how immersive the environments are, 8, sounds, 9, story, 2. You know, it's, they're extreme. So the end result is a game that, you know, kind of ends up in the middle as far as ratings and stuff goes, but it actually has something to offer. Unlike generic games, it's not generic. It has some things that are really good, that are worth mentioning, and because of, you know, the rating and not that many people play it, not that many people will ever really notice that. You know, not that many people will know what it has to offer. And it looks like I've managed to talk for almost exactly the length of the credits, amazingly. <laughs> so that's why, I, that's why I want to focus the sound effects, because chances are, you know, no one's really noticed them all that much, because barely any people have played the game. So, there you go. I hope you've enjoyed my playthrough. Goodbye.